Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modelling and the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy, and today I'm going to be looking at my 172 KP, which, I apologise for my terrible pronunciation, Kovaz Vodi Prostayov. I think that's about right. Vickers Supermarine Spitfire Mark LF1XE. Produced in the 172 scale, as we can see here. It's uh, marked up for the uh, Czech Air Force. I believe a lot of these were actually flown over to Czechoslovakia, or Czechoslovakia after the end of the war and formed the initial backbone of the Czech Air Force before they were supplied with uh, so Russian Soviet aircraft to fly. So, let's have a quick look in the box here. And as per usual, we're going to have a look at the instruction sheet and the historical information provided by KP. It's not too long, so please bear with me. There might be a few translation issues here, which is normally the way, but I'm just going to read it out as per print. Spitfire. Nearly every boy in Czechoslovakia knew this famous fighter plane. During World War II, they were there, there were developed many variants, which gradually improved the performances of this plane. It was a shapely, slim aeroplane with elliptical wing, which fought on all fronts of the Second World War. On the Western Front, it was the most important opponent of the German Luftwaffe. Numerous conversions of the basic construction were realised thanks to the great adaptability of the airframe. Whew. By the middle of 1942, it was obvious that the time had come to improve further the Spitfire's performance, as the new German FW-190 fighter was proving superior to the Spitfire. This was done by installing the new Merlin 61 engine with four-blade airscrew Rotol in a F Mark V airframe, and with this, the Spitfire was more than a match for Germany's vaunted fighter. One of the sub-variants of the F Mark IX was the F Mark IX with clipped wings and powered by an 1,185 kilowatt Merlin 66 engine with E-type armament, the 1F Mark IX-E, cool, that's a mouthful, had two 50-inch machine guns, sorry, two 0.5-inch machine guns fitted in place of the four 303-inch guns normally used with the two 20mm cannon. While the Mark IX had a normal span, the LF Mark IX-E had shorter span, with, which decreased from 11.23 metres to 9.93 metres. This variation variant was used for low altitude operations and ground attack missions. A number of 1,186 Mark IX were delivered to Soviet Union, plus two HF Mark IX high altitude fighters. Czechoslovakian squadrons of the RAF operated with F Mark IX in 1944. They supported the invasion of Normandy and thereafter formed a part of Home Defence Force. When the war ceased, they were equipped with the LF Mark 9E, with which they returned home to Prague. The post-war Czech Air Force received 76 Spitfires LF Mark 9E, for which the S89 designation was used. And then we got the technical descriptions. So here we have a couple of um, options on painting. As we can see, we've got one which is RAF. I'm kind of going to assume that's going to be a um, Czech is going to be Czech squadron in the RAF and then as we can see we've got three different variants on colour options for actual Czech fighters used in the Czech Defence Force with some uh, colour hints here as well as to what colours we're supposed to be using Ooh. the um, instructions are kind of bland I've got to be honest with you there doesn't appear to be much going on here so we've got the wings the cockpit the undercarriage the propeller assembly and we're going to chuck it all together with the um, airframe and the wings. And then we're going to put... We've got a couple of bombs here by the look of it, which is cool. Which is kind of cool. Uh, the... Uh, whatever that is, I forget now. <laughs> the undercarriage. The undercarriage. And I think this is a, an air filter for tropical. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it does appear that we can actually have clip wings or we can attach wing tips to them if we do so require. Get that out of the way. Now this is actually providing in a rather, rather nice white colour, which is kind of interesting. And we have the transfer sheet, which, oh God, it's, it's really yellow. Don't know whether it's going to be that. 
I don't know whether it's going to be saveable, which is a shame because the check markings are quite interesting. So I might have to put just standard British markings on it, but I will try and maybe use these check ones. That's a bit of a shame, but I mean, it is 40 years old, so I can't really complain about it. We have one cockpit cover, which I've got to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not that impressed with that. It kind of looks a bit sort of foggy or cloudy. But I've got plenty of cockpit, cockpit covers, so maybe I'll use a different one. Here we have the uh, main frame of the uh, airframe of the uh, aeroplane. Airframe of the aeroplane. And we can see that we have the aerial already installed. We have some nice detail going on as well. Maybe not quite as nice as the Hasegawa I've just, just done. But it's very fine, so that's probably nicer than the Hella that I've just done. So this is somewhere in the middle, I suppose. Doesn't really appear to be anything particularly nasty going on here. Generally looks as though it's going to go together reasonably easily. It's got nice mounting points. So we've got the tail fins as well. I suppose that's all we can say. Here we have the wings, the wing tops. We have a four blade propeller, this air filter thingy. And we have the extendable wing tips if we want to attach the wing tips. And we've got a couple of little bombs here as well. It all looks quite nice. Doesn't seem to I mean there's probably a little bit of a little bit of sanding that I'm gonna to have to do on places like this, but you know, I mean it's 40 odd years old. These things are not perfect now. So you can't really expect them to be perfect in the 1980s. And then we've got the underside of the wings, which is one piece. Again, we've got some nice looking detail going on here. It's not overly intrusive to the eye. And we have our wheels manifolds the uh, undercarriage the seat looks quite cool i quite like that seat that looks quite nice and that'll be the landing gear there i guess yeah that all looks uh ship shape and bristol fashion can't see anything wrong with it there's a bit of a bit of an imperfection there maybe but we'll have a go with the sanding stick so yeah and uh, my intention is to build this a little bit later on and stick a video up um I do have a tendency to uh, sort of throw these things together quite quickly because my intention with some of these older models, which you know I picked up for probably less than £10 each, is basically to use them as, as cannon fodder basically to practice painting because I do have a airbrush, but I haven't even unpacked it or read the instructions yet. So I'm kind of keen to get, get the airbrush out and have a go with the airbrush. So I think I'm actually going to maybe paint some of these up tomorrow. So uh, stick with me on this. Yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. Questions and suggestions are always welcome. Please like and subscribe and join me for my model building novice ride. Be seeing you.